Hello everyone and welcome back to Chronos Plays Final Fantasy for the After Years. So we're actually at the top of the CPU battle, and now we're gonna head further deeper into the lair of the Father. Also, sorry about the lack of episode a couple, well, actually like two days in a row I think it was. Uh, because, yeah, apparently, apparently I live in an area that likes to get hit by stupidly strong storms and have its power knocked out for a few days. Let me tell you what. It is boring as hell to not have power. Uh, do I want to put that on her? No. Yeah, no. 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 So yeah, no power for a few days. I kept having to sit in my car with the AC and uh, charging my phone so, you know, I could actually check emails and stuff like that. I think I did reply to a few comments, but apparently, while I was gone, YouTube broke the comments, so now you don't get, like, notifications when someone comments on But who likes to read comments anyways? I do. Actually, I like them a lot. Alright, we got two more treasures in this area to get, and then there is an optional boss for us to fight. Tiger Fangs. Um... I think it's just all... Yeah, it's just worse. Better speed, but... The, how fast she is right now, it's not really worth it. You can give those to Yang as a backup fighter. Seraphim's Mace, I think it's a Porum item. That's not equipment, that is bands, Kronos. Bands. You still lose the defense, but you gain a lot of spirit. Like, a lot of spirit. But I'm gonna stick with the Protect Rod because I like physical defense. Now... Up the stairs is the optional boss. I actually want to come down here first. Why? Well, I kind of want to, you know, rest up, save my game. Get into this random cutscene. Not cutscene, battle. But these guys... The red dragon's probably going to fuck my shit up. So let's just use a makeshift cannon. Quake's going to do some good work on it, though. I do have uh, the moon set to waxing moon to lower. <sighs> okay, the lower uh, black magic guys, hurry up, Jesus Christ! Because the next optional boss we're gonna be fighting is gonna be have pretty strong black magic. Now the downside to it, it increases white magic, and the next optional boss is going to be able to cause a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of white magic damage. You know, if worst comes to worst, I can just use makeshift cannon, because apparently that does half the amount of health of the optional boss right now. Why is it playing Baron music now? That's weird. Maybe this is Kane's theme, and I always thought it was Baron's. Never in a million years did I expect you to come back. It has been a while, hasn't it, Kane? I have somewhat mixed feelings about this reunion, but I must admit, you have been a strong ally for us. You seem to have changed as well. It took a very long time, but I have regained control of myself. Just as Cecil did, and just as you did as well, I suppose. So... I owe it all to the power of the Lunarians, in particular the power of you and your Cecil's father. I see. Is... is this moon related to yours at all? What happened to your moon in the ensuing years... in the ensuing years? I do not know. Uh, did you ever notice, Goblet, that we kind of sound similar when we speak? 
It's like the person voicing us has a very limited tone of voice. The Luarian's crystals were robbed of their power, and then the enemy's claws were upon them. They were, were they? Whoever controls this moon, I'm going to exact my revenge upon them. Exact my repen, huh? Seems about right. Learn Spiral Blow Band! Another band we won't be using. Alright, I'm gonna save up just so, you know, I don't have to travel all the way back here when this fucking dragon kills my ass a few times. But, we'll see. We are back up in the lair of the father, so let's head north and fight this lovely optional boss. Now this boss has about 105,000 health. It's the easiest of the optional bosses, but it does have very strong black magic, which is I have, which is why I have it on Waxing Moon. Can you guess who we're fighting? We are fighting the Lunar Wheel, which is a copy of the Mist Dragon. However, this dragon has all the level three elemental spells, tornado, holy, and all other sorts of disgusting, disgusting abilities. But I do want to put a shell on everyone. And we'll have Palm, uh, palm cast uh, Flare. With the Waxing Moon, the damage shouldn't be too bad. With Shell, the damage shouldn't be too bad. We will have you cure yourself. He is going to counter pretty much everything with Tornado and a physical attack, which is fine. Unless he one-shots Pollen. Then that's not so fine. To say the least. I do want to get Shell and Protect onto everyone ASAP, and I also want to cast Haste on a few people. He's slowed, so we should have ample opportunity to do that. Cast, uh, yeah, we'll cast. So this is a second Shell. Let's not attack with, uh, Palm just yet. Okay, with that on, we should be able to. Cast with Flare. We'll do a protect. Keep Ursula on standby. Okay, he didn't counter that. That's fine. And then one. Yeah, one more shell. Now, this should stack. I don't know if it actually does, but it should stack. Okay, Tornado is going to be on Luca. That's fine. No, it's not. He usually doesn't attack the same targets, but, you know, makes sense. Waste of an X potion. Okay, so next up, we're going to have... Well, Ursula cure her. Then I want to cast Haste on Porum. You cast Flare. Sleep Gas shouldn't affect Porum due to the Ribbon. Now, I could probably cheese this up with Makeshift Canning a couple of times before we run out of health, and then he just starts, or she starts busting us with Holy and all that jazz. Who are you attacking? And you will do a Haste on you. Okay, so now we have the healers slash off healers uh, hasted. Now we want to do Ursula and uh, Pollum to get their damage going. And then we'll do Luca last. She does do some damage, so we don't want to completely negate her. Is this thing susceptible to um, sap? I don't know. But after this, it's pretty much, we're going to be doing Twin Rush, uh, Flare, Porum's going to be on standby for healing, and Luca's going to be standby for healing, and then eventually, we should win. Uh, being said, we want to be on the lookout for stupid shit like that.
So yeah, this fight will take a little bit of time due to the nature of the, well, beast. Uh, so I don't have a limit ring, so this won't go over 10,000, but in combination of... Don't hit. Thank you. Combination with a flare, it will do a lot of damage. I'll put four I'm pretty much on Group Y Kiraja. And don't attack. All right. This is the other part of the fight that's really bad, is that it will turn itself into Mist, and like the original Mist Dragon, if you attack it, it will counterattack with a very, very, very powerful ability. Now this sucks, because you can't really tell when it's going to do it, and if you already input commands, it will come up and be like, Hey, bro, I heard you like insta-death. And then it ends your day. Now with Shell and all that jazz on, it might not really hurt, but I don't want... Well, okay, it might not kill you instantly, but it will fucking really hurt. So I don't want to go too far in that direction. Another ability this dragon has, it will eventually start... Uh, healing itself. Miss, alright. There's the holy. It's on Luca. She's dead. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> Luca, you so dead. Now, hopefully, he doesn't counter or she doesn't counter. I say she because the Mist Dragon is supposedly Luke, uh, Rydia's mother, so it would be a she. And the Lunar Dragon's based off the Mist Dragon. So I don't know. I just don't know anymore. Okay, good thing I did a party wide. Don't fucking do that. Please. You jerk. You're being a jerk, Lunar Dragon. Hasn't healed itself yet, so I don't think we've actually are near its death. So, but it has to be coming up. There's poison gas. That's so not a concern of mine that it kind of hurts a little even thinking about it. I want to do one makeshift cannon and see how much damage it does. I don't know. That's it's risky. It's really risky. Because if we don't get the makeshift cannon off and it gets in free hits, we could fuck ourselves. But I kind of want to see what it does. Don't kill Theodore. Do it. Alright, let's see what it does. We're gonna hit it with makeshift cannon, then it's gonna just do like a meteor attack on us and kill everyone. Oh, that would be sad. Don't do that game. No, oh, we killed it. All right. Two of those, and we would have ended the battle instantly. Huh. Go figure. <laughs> uh, well, I'm glad I went through most of the fight. With not it. You don't get any experience points or money for it. Instead. May the young mage be granted a new power. Power surges from the crystal. Who will learn the dual cast ability? Alright. If you rely on a lot of black magic for damage, Palm is the best choice for this. If you rely on getting buffs out like haste to all your party members, Porum is the best option for this. With Porum, you also have the ability to rise, uh, raise someone and do a group wide hail on the same turn, or cast two arises, which completely heals someone from the dead back into the party. I'm gonna go with Porum because I like white magic dual cast. Now, uh, in the original Final Phase 4, I went with uh, Rydia with dual cast, and it worked really great. Uh, it will work really get great in this game too, but I'm going to go with Porum, because it also is, has that support element to it. If you were going to level up Lenora to like the 80s, 
you can give it to Lenora, and it is rather effective on her. She has a lot of very powerful spells that she gets at level 80, and she also has access to both white and black magics. However, Porum and Palum, they level up at the same, like, faster and learn their spells way quicker than her, and are overall better in their specific class than Lenora. So only do Lenora if you... Well, heh. <laughs> If you're, you know, kinky and find her attractive, I guess. But only give it to Lenore. Ha <laughs> ha! Child. Only give dual cast to Lenora if you're actually going to level her up to 80s and keep her in your party. Otherwise, give it to Palm or Porum. You can't go wrong, really. Oh, he's so adorable. That's another reason they give it the poor. I mean, she's just so cute when she gets it. Thank you for not being a total asshole boss, Luna Dragon, and giving us dual cast. Now, with that optional boss taken care of, and all this poison damage, I am going to go heal up and save, and we're going to call it an episode. So, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, press the like button below if you're not subscribed yet. Why don't you head over to my video section, check out some of my other content, and see if it's to your liking. Next time, well, we get to actually put Rydia in our party, because we get some story elements with her coming up. Once again, thank you for watching, and I hope you all have a great day.